We are in the midst of a crisis. The opioid epidemic, it's everywhere. My name is Bianca Dardane. I'm an enrolled member of the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians. I'm in recovery. Um, December 28th, 2016 will be the four years that I've abstained from my drug of choice. I was about 17 years old when I was first exposed to opioids. The first time I tried it, you know, I really liked it and I was like, wow, I've never felt anything like this before, you know, like I felt invincible, I felt powerful, you know, I felt funny and I got to hang out with a cooler crowd, but it was a complete downhill spiral. I would use the opioids and then I would use the methamphetamines and kind of, you know, like when I was coming down off the opioids, I would use the meth and then, you know, go out in search of the opioids. I was 22 when I got pregnant with my lovely son. He's amazing. I had a severe addiction to Percocet at that point in my life. I felt really alone and scared. It was really scary to reach out and ask for help. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know how to approach it. I delivered a happy, healthy, full-term son. I stayed sober for a little while after that. The Eastern Band of the Cherokee Indians has approximately 14,000 enrolled members right now, give or take, that obviously changes. Um, the Koala Boundary covers around 56,000 acres in five counties. Way back when, the Indians were um, not treated very well, um, and they were trying to colonize them and get the savage out. Um, so they actually forced children into boarding school situations and they would not let them speak their language. They cut their hair, which is sacred, and there was a lot of abuse that happened in those schools. And what they're struggling with is, you know, they have this sense of themselves as a traditional Cherokee, and then they were taught this other thing, um, this very awful thing that has um, affected them. And then they're having children, you know, there's a lot of abuse that comes out of that. Very often, no matter what nationality you are, abused people abuse people. I met this guy and like I started, you know, living with him. And then um, I was involved in like this really awful domestic violence situation. Um, you know, and the only thing that I can remember truly using to cope was, you know, like going back to drugs. Folks who've experienced trauma are at a much higher chance of developing a substance use disorder. You have to treat the trauma in order to treat the addiction. The way that intergenerational trauma affects, you know, me, a lot of families grew up and, you know, there was just stuff that they didn't talk about. And it's kind of hard to process emotions and with the domestic violence, um, it really, it really shook me. But at the same time, um, there's another part of me that, you know, I feel like I wasn't completely done using at the time. And I kind of used that as like a back door. I had been arrested on some pretty serious charges. My grandparents gained guardianship of my son. I remember I was signing some papers for his medical care. And like, I was basically like signing my rights away. The drugs have always been there, you know, when nobody else was. And that led to a shack on top of a hill. Um, there was no power, there was no water. And at that point in time in my life, like I knew I couldn't take care of my son. Like I could barely take care of myself. And the only thing that like I'd really ever tried at, you know, was to be a mom. And that was taken from me. So I was gonna take my life that night. 